About a week ago, our version 4.4 was released. It has some pretty cool things like the coalesce operator and a function to create single page websites for our package documentation. But it was quickly overshadowed by a new vulnerability in the R programming language. As far as I'm aware, this is the first critical bug for the R programming language, which has been around for like almost four decades. And personally, I'm not worried about it. So what is this vulnerability? Essentially, the vulnerability allows anyone to execute any R code in an RDA or RDS file. The vulnerability was announced by a group called Hidden Layer. And in their example, a calculator app will be opened on your machine when you close an R session. And the Harbor Master was actually kind enough to provide an RDA file that will do just this. Let's do exactly what we shouldn't do and load a random RDA file off the internet. Except I actually trust the Harbor Master. So for this particular exploit, we need to load the RDA file. And it doesn't actually do anything until we close the R session. So when we close the R session, the calculator app opens. So how did this actually work? So when we load an RDA file, some things are actually loaded into our environment. And if you pay close attention, you'll see that the quit function is now in our global environment. That's weird. If we print out the quit function, we'll see that it has a different signature. So this new quit command calls the system function, which allows you to run arbitrary code on your machine. And this quit function is always called when an R session closes down. This case is pretty innocuous, but you can imagine some folks doing some pretty gnarly things with the system command, like removing whole directory or installing some software. Who knows? How can you actually avoid this? Upgrade R then you won't have to worry about it. This bug was reported and fixed by the time 4.4 was released. And if you're in an organization where IT typically gives you a hard time to install new versions of software, this is your chance. So if you're not gonna upgrade R, what should you do? A good rule of thumb is if you don't know who made the file, don't run it. But before we go, let me point something out. R is a real programming language and you don't need this exploit or any other ones to do bad things with it. This is the nature of using code, not just open source code. Take for example, the XYZ exploit that happened in the Linux community just a few weeks ago. If you're not manually inspecting every single library and every single line of code, you're inherently open to risk. And that's just the way it is. And that's honestly fine. There's a bunch of ways that we can be even more malicious. Take the dot onload function. The dot onload function is executed whenever a package is loaded. That means calling library or require, or even calling a function from the namespace. So let's try something. Let's adapt this current exploit and see what we can do with it in an R package. So I've created an R package called uberpwned where we can explore some different ways to be naughty with the R language. Let's open a new script and create a function called exploit, which we'll just take from the quit function. Let's save this into a new file called zzz.r. Now let's create another function called .onload, which has two arguments, lib and package. And inside the body of this function, we'll call the new exploit function. So whenever this new package is loaded, either from library or a function called from the namespace, this exploit function will be called. If we save this and then load our package, the calculator opened up. Now let's think of another use case. So when you run a function, that function runs other code. What if we used you executing a function to do some bad things behind the scenes? So let's create a new function to take all of your environment variables and send them to a bad guy over the internet using HTTR. We'll use the sys.getn function to get all of the environment variables. Then we'll turn it into a list with as.list and then we'll make that the body of a post request. And we're gonna send this to some fictitious URL. Well, now we wouldn't export this function in our package because with a name like this, I don't think someone would wanna use it. So why not hide it somewhere else? A good way to hide some code is with S3 generics. If you've ever printed the definition of an S3 function, it can be kind of frustrating. Typically all you see is use method in the function name. But if you're familiar enough with R, you know how to find the internals. But most people don't. Let's create a useful function that someone might actually use. We'll create a logger function, which will print some stuff out to the console using CLI and it looks all pretty. But let's make that into an S3 function. So that way we can't see the body definition when it's printed out. Now let's create our default method, which we'll call this send your information function before it actually logs anything to the console. One of the main strengths of the R language is its ability to use compiled code. This lets R packages use other languages like C, Rust, C++, Fortran, Java, and I'm sure other things. It's a superpower of R if you ask me, but if you want to do harm, pre-compiled code is a good way to hide your intention. Typically packages that use compiled code have all of the source code available as well, but some packages just use pre-compiled binaries. One example is something I actually work on called ArcGIS binding. This is because we have proprietary code that we can't expose to end users, so we pre-compile it. That doesn't mean that we're doing a bad thing, but that is a way someone could hide their bad intentions. At the end of the day, if you're programming, you're never gonna be perfectly safe, and that's a risk that we take. With that, I hope you learned something and you feel less scared about the vulnerability, or maybe you feel a lot worse. Either way, I hope you had fun.